goodness. <laughs> Bass is that quintessential freshwater fish. It's probably the, the most popular type of fish to target in all of the United States because you can pretty much target it in any state in the country. Canals, ponds, lakes, everything freshwater pretty much holds bass. We're gonna be fishing the Kissimmee chain of lakes. This area is known for its bass fishing. On average, Florida is home of some of the largest bass on record. Uh, you know, maybe not the world record, but Definitely for numbers of big bass, this is the place to be, and this is the chain of lakes to do it on. What a pretty morning. Yeah, I tell you what, George, we're leaving Camp Mac, 1st of February, Kissimmee Chain of Lakes. And it's known for big bass. It is, you know, we're uh, the beginning of the spawn. We got a lot of small fish moving up. Big fish are coming up, the water temperatures are rising. We've had a cold winter, so I'm looking forward to fishing. We hopefully can get on some big fish today. Well, let's get out there. Let's do it. We're sitting here and it's February. This is not the best time to come to fish this chain of lakes. We're in a pre-spawn, um, the, the weather is fluctuating, the temperatures are fluctuating, it's hard to really develop a pattern. But, you know, talking with Charlie says, listen, if we grind this thing out, we're gonna catch some fish, um, but, you know, I know going into it, we're gonna have to work at it. Charlie, there's beds all throughout here? Yep. We're just, we're just not seeing them, but they're down there. That is correct. We're sitting in probably two foot of water, foot and a half. And uh, when you find that on Lake Kissimmee, that's generally where the bass are gonna spawn. I'm just that's covering water, trying to pull across, incidentally, pull across one of those beds. Yeah, they're hitting it, not because they're hungry, they just don't want it on their bed, they're protecting that bed. And that's the job of a male bass, he'll stay on that bed until the fry hatch, and uh, his job is just to guard them. So we drag a worm or your topwater across the bed, they're gonna hit it. In this area, because there's so much vegetation on the bottom, they could actually fan out of bed anywhere. These are actually known as flags, and if you look in the distance, there's flags all in this little bay. They're actually, they grow on a real sandy bottom. They wanna spawn on the cleanest bottom they can find. What, the, what you don't see on camera is, there's a lot of vegetation underneath the water, mostly hydrilla. Those are a really good spot to catch large bass on this chain. There he is. All right, good job. Right there. Yep, right off the flag, and he ate it too. Good job. I tell you what, let me grab him for you, George. Nice one. It's so much fun on that top water. Oh yeah. He's not coming. Nice fish. Nice fish. A little, how, how much does he think he weighs? He's pound and a half. That's a typical buck bass right there. There you go, Mr. George. Show him what you got. Just grab a lip fall. There you there go. You go. Grabbing a, what are these things on him right here? I was wondering what those are, like little... Those are little leeches attached to them. Good job. There you go, just working right through these reeds that you're talking about. Yep. yep. There should be fish all in front of us for you to catch. <laughs> Throw that little Yozuri popper in there. Look at that thing. That's fun. Awesome job. So this is a male or female? That's a male. That's a male. Now I'll tell you what too, we're gonna the look for today. Belly's all messed, look at this. Yeah, you know what that is, that's where a comerant hit them. Now I'll tell you, some of the fish we're gonna catch today, hopefully we can get it on camera, they'll be peeing when we pull them up. And what they're trying to do is they're getting ready to spawn, that's why they start peeing. Interesting. The, the techniques that they use on Lake Kissimmee, I think are the same techniques that you use anywhere in the state of Florida for bass fishing. It's just timing wise. You know, there's a bunch of different techniques that you can utilize to target these bass. When do you utilize those techniques? Time of the year, the moon phase, the water temperature, that's really what I think separates the great bass fishermen from, you know, just the everyday guy. You know, that's why it's important to have tire poles on a boat in Florida for this style of fishing. The wind's blowing pretty hard today. We can sit here and make multiple presentations to the pad clumps, because that's what it takes a lot of times to aggravate one into biting. So those power poles are worth their money. Boat positioning. Boat positioning, that's it, exactly. That's a good one. There he, he was, he was in the tree. I knew he'd come back and eat it. Get out of them pads. Yeah, he'll work. 
There it is. Yeah. I knew he'd, he'd hit it again. Nice. So that's about it a is. about. Yeah, that's a typical buck, pound, pound and a quarter. You know how we were watching the weigh-ins and the guys are weighing in eight pounds, ten pounds. Now you know why. That's a typical fish you're going to catch right now. I'm looking for the ten pounder there, Charlie. Don't hold out on me, bud. Real Time Florida Sportsman is brought to you by Maui Jim. Seeing is believing. Now, talking with Charlie, he said we're going to have to utilize a bunch of different techniques, but primarily these fish are, are, are getting onto the beds. We're going to be targeting bedded areas, you know, doing a lot of flipping and a lot of pitching. We're going to rig George up to do some uh, pitching in these mats, and what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to put on is a bobber stopper. So you pull that down, right? You just slide the Pull off. it right on the line. And what that does, it's actually a stop for the bullet weight that we're going to put on. That's a 5 16 bullet weight and a 3 aught EWG wide gap hook with your uh, knot of choice. All right, so this is how you rig the bad boy. What you want to do is, you want to stick it through the top of the Senko, come down about a quarter of an inch, come right back out. Bring it all the way to the top, and if you notice, the bend in that hook is actually designed to hold that nice and straight. So now you just simply slide it up. What I like to do is skin hook mine. You'll see some guys that come all the way through here. I actually like to do what we call skin hook it. It's totally weedless. We can throw that anywhere we want. When he grabs it, it's going to That's enough. right. He's going to jump down on it. He'll, and with you pulling and him biting, you'll pull the hook right into his mouth. I'll actually put a little separation in my bobber stopper. But the whole idea is that the weight stays with the bait so that when you cast it in vegetation, you can always feel what your weight or what your worm's doing. Now this darker color is something they like? You said that is the number one color here in Lake Kissimmee. The water's a little tannic, off-colored. If we we're in a crystal clear lake, you would probably use something like watermelon red. But on this lake, your uh, black and blues, your June bugs, your black, those are kind of go-to baits here on uh, Lake Kissimmee. You can get line in colors, and I'm using green, but I will still a lot of times darken the green with a black magic marker. Why? They'll see that white? They will see that white. They are line shy. There you have it. That's the thing with this type of fishing is every lily pad can be holding that 10, 12 pounder. That's the way it is. Every bit of structure that you're fishing looks just as good as the last piece you were on. So you're constantly concentrating on that next cast. When you flip it in there, you have to be ready. You can't be daydreaming. You really have to pay attention. The bites are subtle especially when you're, you're pitching and flipping. It's just a matter of all of a sudden it feels like the rod just loads up and gets heavy. So it's constant concentration, but the anticipation is always there. All right, there's one, George. Bounce. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, there's a buck for you. That's the typical one in here, huh? Yep, that's basically what we're going to find. You know, we may run into Mama sooner or later, but that is a typical Lake Kissimmee bass. Look how pretty she is. Clean. That's a typical buck bass. His job right now is to get ready to mate. Yeah, there's a bunch of teenage boys out here. They got nothing but better on their mind than girls. That's it. Garden the beds. They definitely have reproduction on their mind. There it is. Good job, George! <laughs> Sweet! All right. That's an awesome job. Hanging around that wood. Yeah, I felt that. Yeah, baby. Threw it in there and he thumped it. Good job. Little boy. Teenager. We definitely changed locations and that's important. We changed complete lakes. And it's the same thing in salt water as in fresh water. If you have the ability to move from one area to the other, try different stuff, you gotta do it. You just have to, you know, sometimes it's a matter of being on the windward side versus the leeward side, the sunny side versus the shady side. So much of fishing is developing a pattern. And what makes these guys great fishermen is the ability to get out there every day and develop a pattern. Hit them. All right, all right. Mm. Keep cranking, keep cranking, keep cranking. You got him, come on, keep cranking. You got him, here he comes, good job. Good job. That was cool. Sweet. Good job. That's probably the best one of the day so far. God, it's weird. It all of a sudden just feels like you hooked the bottom. I told you. Just held it there and all of a sudden it just started moving away a little bit. Yep. It's hard for a lot of people to do this because you think you're stuck in hydrilla, 
and you're actually a fish is sitting there holding it. Brush Caught it hog. on a brush hog, which is a wannabe lizard. So just switched it up a little bit. Still dark, you know, dark color. Fish it the same way. Pitched them in there, but caught one. Real Time Florida Sportsman is brought to you by PIN. Let the battle begin. You know, one of the things I do, George, when I'm out here looking for fish for uh, either a tournament or a fun trip or something like that, you got all these pads out here and the, the secret is you want to find the spot within the spot. So I'll come out here and I'll run into an area like this. If I get two bites or catch two fish, it pretty much tells me everything I need to know. So now I can actually narrow down this specific area instead of all the pads that are all the way around us here. It all looks good. I mean, it I mean, all looks good. And you hear that from people that don't fish Kissimmee. How do you know it all looks good? It's uh, time on the water is a whole key. I mean, I grew up fishing lakes and, and ponds in the neighborhoods that I lived in, but you know, later on, I, when I moved into saltwater, there wasn't a lot of experience in, in bass. And we, you know, with the show, we typically go one show a year. We'll do some fresh water, some some sweet water, and catch some bass. Um, I, I always look forward to it. It's something totally different. You dust off the old bait casters. You perfect that old that flipping technique, that pitching technique. So what I've found is, if you can fish in fresh water, you can fish in saltwater. You know, pitching baits. Pitching these soft plastics into heavy structure, this is the same thing that we do, you know, pretty much on the East Coast snook fishing. You're, you're target fishing, you're, you know, looking for certain areas, pitching certain baits, so it's very similar to what I do at home. And this is fun for me. I'm not doing this all the time. I never use a uh, bait casting rod, so when I can get in these heavy structured areas with these lily pads and really slow things down and just concentrate on catching that one fish in that heavy structured area, you know, I look forward to that. There it is. There he, there is. he is. There it is. Get him up out of there. I'll grab him if you can get him up out of there. Looks like a good one, too. Yep, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> awesome blow up, though. Yeah, on that Yozuri prop bait. Awesome blow up. I knew I threw it in there enough. It was just too pretty. You had to eat it. Yep. He's probably got brothers in there somewhere. Sun's going down just before dark. Throwing that top water plug back on. Yeah, that's absolutely. A bait. You know, this, this is a great time. That magic hour, the hour right before the sun goes down, seems, you know, it always seems like the fish chew then. You know, low light condition, because that's how we first started catching them this morning. We yeah. caught one on the popper, the Ozuri popper, now the prop bait. Prop bait works. Awesome job. You know, even though you come to a big bass destination, the fishing has been a little bit off. And Charlie's, I'm telling you, honestly, it was the last patch that we were going to fish. The last area of, of, of of cover and he flips in there. I'm on the back of the boat watching him and I see him set up on this thing and I know he's got a big one on. There he is, there he is. Oh, good one, way to finish it. Sweet. Wow, nice Sweet. fish. Sorry boys, I'd give you some notice. <clears throat> nice fish. Well, the sun is going down, the sky doesn't get any prettier than this. Oh baby, there it is, brother George. That's a good one, finish yeah, it off. a couple pounds. Nice. We're just saying this is the perfect time of night. Doesn't get any prettier than this right it here. Don't get no better than that. That's a couple of pounds anyhow. It's a good way to finish it. Yep. Sweet. 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 Look at that. Look at that. That's a real time right there. Kissimmee chain of lakes. Large mouth Lake bass. Lake Hatchnaha. If you're going to plan a bass trip in Florida and looking for a destination to travel to, Camp Max is the place to do it. It has the best accommodations. I mean, it definitely caters to fishermen. The, the Liar's Lodge, I mean, who names the place Liar's Lodge? That's perfect. But the Liar's Lodge has easy parking for boat trailers, places to plug in your, your trolling motor batteries. They have a little general store, easy boat ramps. This area is the one-stop shop for bass fishing, and it's the type of place that you can come to and utilize a bunch of different techniques. You can perfect your, your flipping, your pitching, your top water, you know, your live bait. There's, you can come here and do just about everything to target these bass. One of the highlights for me of this trip was the end of day one. 
You're getting to that magic hour that we call, all fishermen call it that, where the sun is going down. It, it's just a magical time. The sky lights up like a rainbow in colors and it, it, you, you have the whole memory of the day behind you, but you have the anticipation of the day, of the following day still there. It's just a, it's just a special time. It's a, obviously a special place to, to experience it here on Lake Kissimmee. And um, it's, it's probably one of the, the best parts of the trip. With these winter mornings, it, it lends itself to you know picturesque scenes. You have difference in temperatures from the water to the air. That it creates this steam that's coming off off the water first thing in the morning. As the sun's coming up, you you couldn't you really can't paint it something as nice as this. It's one of those places that you just have to come out. You have to witness for yourself. Um, I'm looking forward to the morning. The sun's coming up. I know that you know we're in store. If not for some great fish, and definitely a, a pretty day. Real Time Florida Sportsman is brought to you by Power Pole, Swift, Silent, Secure. We didn't live bait uh, on the show, but it's very popular, especially for it's a great thing for beginners Absolutely. that may not have the techniques, the skills, the casting skills, the feel of what you know what a bass feels like when he bites. So a good way to take somebody out there to put them on fish is to go and what get a dozen shiners. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a great technique for kids. You got a good point. For a beginning fisherman, the cork goes down, they let them swim off and set the hook. Live bait sometimes is the way to go. Another thing with that too is we, we see these bait casters, and I know I'll let you elaborate on the different types of bait casters, but you don't need a bait caster to go bass fishing. Absolutely. If you're comfortable with a spinning rod, it's it's you could take the same gear that we're using in salt water or inshore, you know, near shore, snook fishing, trout fishing. You can take those same rods come out here and catch bass. Absolutely, you don't have to invest in a bait caster. You know, one of the things I tell people about a bait caster versus a spinning equipment, if you look at a bait caster, it's just a mini winch, much like what's on the front of your boat up here, it develops a lot of power. So most of your bass fishermen actually use bait casting simply because it's a very strong reel. The drags usually have 20 plus pounds of drag, seven foot rod, medium heavy at the least. Uh, you can't come out here with a medium rod and, and expect to winch them out of the heavy cover that we fish. Very, very important. And another thing with those bait casters is the line pickup. And yeah. Some of these reels are, you're, you're telling me, you know, eight to one pickup ratio, which, which means every time you turn that handle one time, that spool is spinning eight times, which is incredible. Absolutely, you know, um, this past year, I bought my first eight one to one gear ratio reel. And I didn't buy it necessarily to uh, use a lure with it or anything, but I started thinking, how many more pitches can I get in a day's time because I can get that bait back to me quicker? You know, I bet that when we went fishing yesterday, I bet we probably pitched several thousand times in a day's time. So you can actually bring that, that lure in a lot quicker and get it back out with those high gear, high gear ratio reels. George, There's get him, get him! Good job, George! All right. God, Here, right out of the middle of all that stuff. Here, let me give you a hand. He's got all that junk on him. Yep, all right. All right, that's a nice one, George. God, he came right out of the Look middle at of all that. Look at the stuff he was in. That's an awesome fish. Caught him on a dang uh, small uh, beaver bait. One ounce weight. Punching through the worst of that stuff. Man, I see why you got to use some heavy tackle. Charlie said, listen, we're going to take this buck bass out. We're going to stick him in the live well. And I thought, yeah, is this, is this frowned upon? Is this even legit? But that's, that's what they do. They pull that male off the bed. The male is guarding the bed. We pull him off. We put him in the live well for a minute. We're power pulled down. We're not going to go far. So we're going to send him back to his house here in a little bit. But for that 10 or 15 minutes, we're going to put him in the live well, and we're going to pitch back in that same spot. We're going to try to get that female to come in and guard that bed now since the male left and pick off that big fish. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Talk, he's coming your way. Good one? Oh my God! Not bad. Oh my God, keep him down there. That's Grab the one him, we're... George! Ah, yeah, that's the one George. we're looking for. Nice! Ah. Good job, there buddy. There it is. That's the one we've been looking for right there. 
stopped on that spot. Look at that. That's it. It's a couple pounder there. Yeah, how, how big is that? Probably knocking on five, I'm going to tell you. God, that's the one, Charlie. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what. That's a nice fish right there, George. That's what Lake Kissimmee is all about. Bedding season right here. Fishing the Kissimmee Chain of Lakes with Charlie Wine Pearl out of Camp Mac was an enjoyable experience. I came here wanting to learn the different techniques for largemouth bass fishing, and I definitely picked up some new pointers. It was a fun experience, we caught a bunch of fish, and I walked away a better bass angler because of Charlie. They definitely have reproduction on their mind. Who doesn't? There it is, the sun is going, get... Fat, God. with a big mouth, just like my first wife. <laughs> yes! Send it! He must buy stock in Senko, because Senko? This area is the one shop stop. Pretty morning, first here. Ah, God, Bowie. Ready? Ready? Lake is ready? <laughs> ready? <clears throat> ready? No. Go ahead. Okay. All right. I'm not quite ready yet. Ready? Just set that hook in him. <laughs> Bet your big bass. The Camp Mac, Kissimmee Chain Lakes. Holy <laughs> <laughs>